Okay, so long story short, the bulk stock, very cool, much good. Solid 8 out of 10. Maybe 8.5 if you're getting the Marksman version. Not as professional as the ProTube, but more professional than anything else. Available now for only $89.99. Head to bulkstock.com to learn more. If you just spent the last 15 seconds wondering what the hell I'm talking about, then do not fear. Just stick around for the next 10 minutes, and I'll furnish you with a needlessly long and in-depth breakdown of this product, and how it relates to the other options on the market. At the moment, it's all too easy to waste your hard-earned cash on flimsy, clunky, or plainly inoperate accessories that will, in the long run, hurt your fun, ruin your aim with your gun, and are products that one should shun. And I think it's important that those getting into VR for the first time are given enough information to differentiate between the good, the bad, and the ugly. All that in mind, in this video we'll be taking a look at a new gun stock from Boke VR, a product that represents the same deep understanding and care that went into the original ProTube, but with a more straightforward style and streamlined features. Nicely filling a niche in the market for the growing, or or dying, I can't really tell right now, uh, VR esports community. Like all VR gun stocks, the Boke stock's primary and singular function is to give steady and reliable aim in first person shooters. Games like Pavlov, Contractors Onward, and anything else that features two handed rifles. By anchoring your VR controllers to a solid object, it's possible to eliminate any shake or wobble, essentially recreating one of the central real world benefits of an actual rifle. Using a gun stock dramatically increases your chances of hitting shots at pretty much any range, whilst bringing the added benefit of greatly enhanced immersion. The best way I can convey this thing's vibe is to compare to other stocks that I've reviewed in the past. And so in the name of science, I've constructed a number of highly calculated and carefully constructed graphs and diagrams, which I think will give a good insight into how the boat relates to its competitors. I realize this might not be good practice, and I should just review the thing by itself. But actually, there's a lot of nerdy nuance here, and being a pro-level esports athlete, talking about this stuff in minute detail it makes me feel like I haven't wasted the last four years of my life. Pause. Since editing this review, James has released the Index Marksman version 2. This improved design solves the one big criticism I had of the version featured in this video. To quickly summarize, the stock James sent me had a lot of flex. This new iteration, however, looks a lot more solid. So whilst it's annoying that I don't have that new version to verify the improvements, I think it's safe to say that this particular criticism isn't valid anymore. This also means that the footage of the stock is now technically outdated, sadly. So every time that you see this cup, imagine this cup instead. Otherwise, I think the rest of the video still applies. Okay, unpause. Build time, uh, ease. Time of ease build. It took me about 15 minutes to put together all three of the stocks that I received in the mail. It basically boiled down to insert pole into butt and screw. Giggity. The index version was the most complicated, but that's really not saying much. But after watching James's handy explainer video, it was nice and easy to set up and pretty straightforward. The index version 1 cups, which I got sent, snap onto the index controller and required a specific technique to get on and off, and this could actually damage the controller itself. However, with the new version 2, it looks a bit simpler and uses tightened bolts instead. The controllers are then slid on and off from a mounting point on the stock itself. Like, whoa, not like that. Whereas the Quest controllers simply sit in and are manually removed from the permanently attached cup, similar to the very first original Pro Tubes. The stocks come with an extra loop attachment if you want to have a two point sling, which is also easy to attach. All in all, the stock is not as straightforward to build as the Pro Tube, which, at least when I got it, comes pre made and just unfolds basically. But it is vastly superior to the Lego meets IKEA Apto build quality. The Boke stock is constructed out of high quality 3D print plastic and carbon fiber tubing, basically like every single stock on the market, and is clearly designed to be as uncomplicated and effective as possible. There are no fancy elbows or joints, only the bare essentials. So the build quality isn't amazing, but it, it is just as good as it needs to be. And the lack of finer quality build materials, uh, for example the end caps on these carbon tubes versus the end caps on the Apto tubes, or perfectly flush connections for example, none of that impacts functionality in the slide. Lightest. The simple design also means a stiffer stock generally speaking, and less chance of individual components breaking, as there are simply less components to break, less points of failure. This is actually a huge plus point, as every single other stock I've reviewed has broken in some way or another. Even the industry leading pro tube, whilst fantastic, has multiple components that have broken on me after extended use. So despite having arguably lesser build quality than the pro tube, it actually has less requirements for a high build quality. And therefore will potentially last longer than stocks that have more points of failure. The nature of bottom mounted stocks and less complicated mounting in general gives the Quest version a rigidity to weight ratio that would make other stocks 
balk their heads in shame. And it's the very nature of the simple quest controllers that allow this to be the case. The index controllers, however, are a goddamn monstrosity. They weigh a ton, have dangly bits everywhere, and I imagine are an absolute bloody nightmare to work with for those who are designing peripherals. Pause. I think this is a contributing factor to why there was flex in the original version that I was sent. There was a whole section here talking about it, but it does look like the version 2 should be a lot more solid, so that's one big criticism potentially corrected. Kinda sucks for people who already own the original version, but it's great news for any potential new customers. Anyway, carrying on. The cups clip easily onto the top portion of the controller, so if you're like me and you own a bazillion gun stocks, you can use the ProTube and the Balk stock mounts at the same time, which is pretty cool. Customizability. As mentioned, the Balk stock, Boak stock, oh my god, how do I pronounce that? It prioritizes simplicity over customizability and has a set and forget style, ensuring that muscle memory is never thrown off due to loosening components or impacts. And considering what we've learned over the years, that actually makes a lot of sense for its target audience. Extreme customizability is cool and seems like it should be useful, but is actually by no means necessary, especially in VR esports, where 90% of the player base do everything that they can to streamline and simplify their stock setups. All that said, the bulk stock, it actually is customizable. You can bring the controller points forward or backwards and on the Marksman version you can raise or lower the cheek rest. I cannot overstate how awesome and effective this is. This one single point of adjustability is no joke, better than anything else I have seen on any other stock so far. In my years of competing in the VRML, four years, after four years of competing, I never once used the cheek rest on my pro tube. Setting it up correctly for one weapon usually meant it getting in the way for another, as Onward does not yet have gun stock calibration, although I have heard that it is coming soon, so soon this problem will be a bit of a moot point, but still. In order to make the cheek rest work on the pro tube, I have to reposition almost every other joint on the stock, and then test it repeatedly to make sure that everything lines up. On the Marksman, however, but you can raise and lower the cheek rest easily and quickly without it affecting the rest of the stock. Amazing. This feature alone makes the bulk stock worth the price in my opinion. By the way, if you already own a ProTube, you can buy a Marksman back end upgrade which fits onto the ProTube, solving this one glaring issue with the ProTube. Double thumbs up, super awesome. Effectiveness. So. What does this stock, this stock, and this stock all have in common? That's right, they all basically function the same. So, uh, yes, the bulk stock, like the Apto, and like the ProTube, are effective. If it has three points of contact, then your aim is gonna be better than having no stock. In this sense, you can't really go wrong with anything you buy or DIY, but if you really want to try and wish in-game not to die, then the bulk stock is pretty fly. As stated on the website, the philosophy behind the bulk stock is to provide users with an unobtrusive, effective, and simple solution for the purists among us, with a laser focus on uncomplicated and highly effective setups. As a result, this stock is extremely lightweight, allowing you to play for longer and with less fatigue, which is important when you consider VR esports players tend to sit there in the same stress position for five, six minutes at a time. Or, well, well <laughs> what they used to anyway. Uh, the following only applies to the Fancy Pants Marksman Edition, but quickly and dependably, moving the cheek rest into a usable position that you can then anchor to your head is absolutely huge for effectiveness. This increases the points of contact from three to four, which is like an improvement of I don't know, like what well, a lot. It's less of a big deal at the usual close to mid-range engagement distances where you might not have time to even nuzzle the butt and where speed is more important. But for people who are interested in the sniper role, I'm certain having a properly positioned cheek rest is absolutely crucial. And unlike literally every other stock I've seen, the Marksman offers a legitimately genius solution to make this work. Sniping fast moving targets over 12 times is extremely difficult, take it from me. And it's a skill that I never even got close to mastering. Uh, I'm more of a spray and pray kind of guy. But for the first time, having this stock has convinced me to legitimately give it a go. I really think it, it might be something enjoyable uh, for, for me to have a crack at, purely just because of this cheek rest. The only thing that potentially lessens or changes this stock's effectiveness is the lack of magnets. Even on the crappiest eBay gun stock, you'll likely find these sticky boys, and for good reason. When ProTube introduced magnetic cups, it was a game changer with a long list of positives. I use mine to look for buried treasure, for example, or to store my keys. It quickly became a standard feature on even the crappiest gun stock, so omitting magnets from this stock in the name of cost is quite controversial. Instead, we have these clever slides bracket thingies that add a small degree of difficulty and initial weirdness to quickly operating the stock. Instead of letting the force guide you, one must uh, fumble blindly to um, get one's hand situated on a, 
on one's pole, which initially is quite stressful. Once you have the muscle memory dialed in though, I can imagine it's practically identical in speed and reliability to magnets. The difference of course being that with such a relatively insecure attachment style, the controllers are at risk of leaving you with little or no warning, a potentially painful outcome for your toes and your wallet. By the way, I suggest getting used to using your back hand to reload with, as that seems to be easier to place than the front hand. I also quite enjoy being able to leave my controllers wherever I want without worrying about them wiping my floppy disks or changing my desktop wallpaper to uh, rainbow mode. Looks and design. Let's talk looks. It's freaking yellow. What more could you want? I fucking love how yellow this thing is. I'm craving a banana just looking at it. But wait, what's this? It comes in seven different colors and you could probably mix and match colored components if you wanted to. I made a big deal about the Apto being burgundy, but this is just fucking wild. Even the box it came in gave me imported food produce vibes. Uh, probably because it's being sent from a former colony. Uh, <laughs> uh, banana colour aside, it's, you know, it's okay. Once again, style, like everything else, is second to functionality. Being a minimalist myself, as you can see by my clutter, I, I personally quite enjoy the clean aesthetic, but it certainly isn't anything special. The more components and material in general, the more opportunity there is to build a shape or a style with that material. These gun stocks, whilst offensive to my soul, uh, they look pretty cool, I guess? Any lighter is simpler and the bulk stock would just be a tube. Difficult to style a tube. I begrudgingly concede the top spot to the Apto for the mere fact that it looks a little bit like a transformer. Target audience. Bit of a weird category this, but I think it's worth talking about the design philosophies between each product. The way I see it, casual means global in the way that it will accommodate various different headsets and controllers and configurations or have easily replaceable parts that allow for this and can switch between top and bottom mount depending on the needs of the user. It will also probably have fancy packaging and be aggressively marketed towards hardcore competitive gamers as let's be real uh, that's how most filthy fucking casuals see themselves uh, not like us real professional gamers I'm just I'm just saying I'm just I'm just saying just saying just saying just saying, just saying, just saying. Whereas a true esports stock will be highly specific and will generally fit the singular use case scenario of the user. If like me you've been using the same two rifles in Onward for the past four years of your life, that's literally not a joke, the same two rifles that entire time pretty much. You will generally prefer a stock that is specifically suited to those weapons, the few weapons that you do actually use. And you won't care if it's utterly unsuitable for the other 80% of the weapons roster. Even though realistically most VR rifles will work fine with the boat stock, it pretty much is one size fits all. A lot of customizability in other stocks is actually superfluous in my opinion. And they also won't be marketed heavily at professional gamers, as the only people buying these stocks, for example or the bulk stock are going to be people who are already part of that community and they would have heard about it through word of mouth or other people talking about the stock as opposed to heavily targeted marketing uh, schemes or whatnot. Professional players get this, they use it, they tell other professional players about it and it remains a bit of a niche thing as opposed to a generalized audience type of thing. I hope that makes sense. All the stocks mentioned can be used effectively by casual players and esports pros alike. However, I think it's safe to say that from a design perspective, the Apto is more suited to casuals, the bulk stock is more suited to serious competitors and the ProTube falls somewhere in the middle. Cost compatibility and 3D printing. The original JB series without the fancy adjustable back section will accommodate Quest 1, 2 and the original Rift CV1 controllers and it will cost you $80, whereas the Marksman version with the adjustable cheek weld is $100 and the Index version of that will cost $110. This might change in the future, this is just the prices right now. If you want to save some money, you can also buy the forged signature um, for $40, in which case you will only receive the 3D printed parts to then be fitted onto an 18mm or 3 quarter inch wooden dowel using your own fasteners. Needless to say, this will be more complicated to assemble, but obviously at half the price it may well just be worth it. James sent me this example version uh, where the wood has been painted black, but personally I would like to see you know, like one with mahogany maybe? Depending on what wood you use, it could end up looking pretty spiffy. For those that have access to a quality 3D printer, you can just download the files for free and do it yourself. Though if you choose to go down this route, I suggest that you leave a donation. This way you can make the entire damn thing your own damn self. Again, this just goes to show how the mission priority here is to raise the bar for VR equipment in general, rather than cynically making cash monies by any means necessary. Here is a table with the prices for all three stockists for comparison. Get it? Stockists because they stock stocks. So there you have it. The Boke stock, the Balk stock, 
the pokey 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 I just want to say a massive thanks to James for sending me these to review. No one understands the needs of an esports athlete more than an esports athlete, and James has been competing in Onward at the highest level for years now. James has not only brought an awesome range of products to the market that perfectly fill the niche of affordability and usability, but he's also helped to raise the level of understanding on certain topics that are of critical importance to the continued viability of VR esports. He also throws grenades with the accuracy of precision guided munitions. If you need a sturdy, reliable, hard wearing and functional gun stock, you really can't go wrong with the Broke VR lineup. They may not have some of the bells and whistles of other products, and that might be a turn off for some, but in my humble opinion, the more features a stock has, the less focus there is on its central purpose. So yeah, great product. Recommend it highly. You can find links to buy this down in the description. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Done. Script scripted. Script, motherfucker. <laughs>